All right, so by now in class, we have talked about, hopefully, how to solve a first-order linear differential equation. So I just want to run through a, uh, I guess, a slightly more complicated example. If you recall, the form of a first-order linear differential equation will be this right here. And we use this thing called an integrating factor that we're calling mu um, to help us solve this differential equation. So first step would be to make sure that this is in the correct form. If you start plugging this into the integrating factor, it's not going to work out. This is your y term right here, so you actually need it on this side of the equation. And we're going to move the cosine over to the right side. Okay, now that we have it in the correct form, we can write down what our integrating factor is. It's a function of x, and it's going to be e to the power of the integral of tangent x dx. Now, what is the integral of tangent of x dx? If you don't remember it, uh, that's actually really great. Why would you remember something that you haven't used in such a long time? So kudos to your brain for forgetting that information. Um, but what you do remember how to do, or what you should remember how to do, is some problem solving and uh, how to do a u substitution. And also, you'll probably, hopefully, remember that tangent can be written as a sine over a cosine. Now this problem becomes extra fun because you get to do a u substitution just to find your integrating factor. I'll put it in right here. If you set up u is cosine of x, du is going to be negative sine of x dx, and you end up with a 1 over u du with a negative sign in there. If you work that out, you'll end up getting e to the negative natural log of cosine. And man, this is such a great problem because we also have to remember our rules for exponentials and logarithms. This negative here keeps the exponential and the logarithm from canceling each other. So you have to actually put that negative on the power of cosine of x. So it's going to look like this. Something like that right there. Now that power is actually on the cosine of x. So you could call that uh, 1 over cosine of x is secant of x. So this is e to the natural log of secant of x. OK, and finally now we can cancel the exponential and the natural log. Phew, and we get our integrating factor is the secant of x. Now I'm just popping things up on your screen pretty fast here. I don't want you to waste your time watching me write. So um, if you need more time, just hit pause on your browser. I'm just going to kind of run through this. The secant cancels with one of the cosines to leave a cosine x on the right-hand side of the equation. And now, now we're at a point where the left-hand side of the equation is always going to turn into a derivative of two things. And those two things should always be the dependent variable, that's y, and the integrating factor, that's secant x. Now, you're at a point here where if you've made a mistake, you should know. Because this derivative should work out to be the line right uh, above it. So if you try to take this derivative, you write down y times the derivative of secant x. The derivative of secant x, if you don't remember, is secant tangent. You can figure that out with the quotient rule. Um, plus the second term, that's secant of x, times the derivative of y, which is just y prime. So this actually checks out right here, and that's a check that we should make every time we do one of these problems. Now, the goal in solving any differential equation is to get y as a function of x, if those are your variables. And to get y by itself, we need to get rid of that derivative there. We do that with an integral with respect to x. The derivative and the integral cancel. And the integral of cosine of x is just sine of x plus a constant. Now if we want to get y by itself, we divide through by secant, which is the same thing as multiplying through by a cosine. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to write down cosine of x times sine of x plus c times cosine of x. What is c? Well, we're going to use our initial condition to find c. Right there. We're plugging in x equals 0 and y equals 3. So cosine of 0 is just 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0, again, is 1. So you have c equals 3. And the final answer to the solution of the initial value problem is then this line right here. It's y equals cosine of x sine of x plus 3 cosine of x. And that answer is perfect. Okay, I hope you liked that example. That was a pretty quick video. I want to give you a quiz now. Okay, here's your video quiz. 
solve that initial value problem right there. Good luck, and I'll see you all in class.